Hey, welcome back to Hardly Tech. Once again, we're taking a look at performance in Super Mario Odyssey. This time, however, we're taking a look at performance on the Asus Phoenix RTX 3060 V2 12 gigabyte. Whew. <sighs> it's a mouthful to see just how well or how poorly this little monster can handle 4K internal res emulation. At 4K internal resolution, the game still looks freaking great. And like previously, I'm using the same mods for Super Mario Odyssey created by The Boy 181 The mods include Disable Dynamic Resolution, so the internal resolution is locked at the res I select in Yuzu. Disable Camera Motion Blur, because as I've mentioned previously, I really don't like motion blur in games. We're also using Disable Web Applet to fix a crash that happens when traveling from Cascade Kingdom to Sand Kingdom for the first time in emulation. And lastly, Screenshot Mode Graphics to enable the highest quality textures and graphic settings the game offers. For instance, when you use the in-game photo mode. As with the previous video, you can see the game is hitching a little bit here and there, and like before, the 3060 isn't really being pushed super hard, the random stutters are from the game compiling shaders as I'm playing. In the emulation configuration tab, under the general settings I have limit speed percent to 100%, multi-core CPU emulation enabled, and extended memory layout 6GB of DRAM option ticked on and enabled. Under CPU I've left accuracy set to auto, and under graphics I'm using the Vulkan API, I have use disk pipeline cache, Use Asynchronous GPU Emulation and Accelerate ASTC Texture Decoding, all ticked and set to on. The game is in full screen mode, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, of course, and the resolution is set to 2160p, otherwise known as 4K. I'm also using AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is enabled through the Vulkan options in Yuzu. It really helps clean up the edges on vertices, and helps to make some of the texture definitions stand out just a tad bit more. And honestly, this implementation of Fidelity FX is one of the best implementations I've seen in the game. And this time, I've disabled FXAA anti-aliasing using the mod created by The Boy 181 that disables FXAA through hardware instead of through Yuzu's software options. And as you can see, it really helps clean up the edges in-game, even at 4K. Other settings to note, under the Advanced tab for graphic settings, I have GPU accuracy level set to extreme, like previously. I also have asynchronous shaders, and use fast GPU time ticked on and enabled, and of course, 16 times anisotropic filtering. Even at 4K, the game looks great. I would consider this nearly next-gen, even without any extra shading work or lighting magic going on through post-processing. If Nintendo had a version of the Switch that could play games at even a native internal res of 1080p, I think it would really help clean up the image in their games. Nintendo games are set to display at 1080p when docked, but that isn't the same as rendering a game at a native 1080p. Using something like AMD Fidelity FX, Nintendo could work a little bit of magic behind the scenes and really push their games into the today world of graphics that we're all used to at this point from other publishers. Performance-wise, at 4K, this little 3060 isn't even breaking a sweat. So I actually stopped the game, increased the internal resolution to 3240p, otherwise known as 6K! This was enough to push the 3060 into using its full potential, power draw and clock speed wise anyways. It's not 8K, but it doesn't have to be. The image looks so clean and crisp, I don't think most people would know the difference without being told one image was <coughs> only 6K and the other 8K. Frame rates are generally steady, outside of compiling shaders in the background of course. There are only a few spots where the 3060 drops below 60 FPS, and it really doesn't last very long. If you have a VRR display, I'm guessing you probably wouldn't even notice these dips into the 50s without a readout. I did try a slight overclock on the 3060 though, just to see if it would help to push the frame rates to a steady 60 FPS in these areas, and it honestly didn't really make much of a difference. However, as I'd mentioned, these dips are few and far between, so I don't think it's really much of an issue. If you're someone that must have a 60 FPS locked at all times, anything below that just physically hurts you, 
Then I would just drop the internal res to 4K. Turn on FX Super Resolution and enjoy a super crisp game with a rock solid 60 FPS. And with lower heat and power usage. Win-win. So there isn't a lot left to say about this little powerhouse of a 3060. It does a great job emulating Super Mario Odyssey at 4K, and even 6K. Who would have thought? I'm pretty impressed with what this card is capable of. I hope you are as well. Tell me what you think down below about this little GPU. If this video and my previous Yuzu emulation video do well, I may just make this a recurring series, testing out different levels in Odyssey and maybe a few other Switch titles that I think are pretty awesome. So please, hit those buttons, it would really help me out. I hope you all found this video useful in some way, and if you're a fan of emulation, hit that thumbs up, subscribe! Check me out over on Twitter at hardly underscore tech, check out the Patreon, and lastly, give my secondary channel Hardly Games a view if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it. Here's some extra footage of the rest of Cascade Kingdom, so you can all see what performance is like the rest of the way through. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!
Woo! <laughs> 